If you haven't tried The Spectator magazine before, then do give us a try. We've got uh, a rather unusually generous introductory offer right now. One pound a week for the first year. You can avail yourself of this rather uneconomic, for us anyway, offer on spectator.co.uk forward slash TV offer. So the prequel to Game of Thrones is released next week about the House of Targaryen, which was eventually captured by an underestimated woman who went on to slay all of her opponents and take the throne. In related news, Liz Truss is now very close to being made leader of the Conservative Party, with a few more weeks to go left of the Tory leadership campaign. The, she has got more MP support now than Rishi Sunak, and the polls still suggest she's ahead amongst the general members by a ratio of 3 to 1, but the race still continues. In this week's magazine, Katie Balls looks at what sort of government Liz Truss might end up, might end up running, and she joins me now, as does Isabel Hardman. Um, so, Katie, Liz Truss has got the reputation of being quite a, you know, amiable, she likes a laugh, she's good fun, but not always the most forgiving of persons. You wouldn't want to be one of her enemies, yet she will leave this leadership campaign with quite a few enemies. What's going to happen to them when her cabinet is announced? Well, I think some of these, and perhaps uh, more than not, will be heading to political Siberia. Uh, you have a situation where I think in some cases, such as, for example, in the case of Dominic Raab, who is a Rishi Sunak backer, who I think is seen to have been particularly problematic by the trust camp because he uh, wrote an op-ed in which he likened Liz Truss's uh, economic plans to an electoral suicide note. I don't think there's any chance, really, of Dominic Raab having a role in Liz as Truss's government or being offered one. Now, given what he said, he would probably say no. You would imagine at the offer, but the offer won't be coming. I think also figures such as Michael Gove, who has not endorsed Rishi Sunak, but who I think has long been a foe of Liz Truss's when it comes to the cabinet. Some say they have a very jovial relationship, but I think jokes aside, they disagree on lots of big issues, particularly trade. And uh, there is a sense in the Truss camp that when Gove is given a position, partly because he's a very skilled minister, he tends to extend his brief, um, you, know, you know, dip into other people's uh, departments, what they're doing, and therefore it's probably safer uh, to have him on the back benches. And there's lots of questions which is, if she actually has to lead a government, uh, will she be doing some big unifying measures? I think part of the issue is so many jobs have been promised, or at least supporters of Liz Trust believe they have been promised jobs, that there's not actually that much space um, to offer too many uh, across to the other camp. I think Rishi Sunak will be offered a job, but um, few would expect him to take that, and it's unlikely to be a particularly senior role. And um, let's, of course, see what the voting margin is if Liz Trust wins. So that's um, Michael Gove out. That's Rishi Sunak out, that's Dominic Rab out, all pretty big beasts. And by the way, Michael Gove hasn't said a word against Liz Trust during this campaign. But, but you're saying it's because, interestingly, an ideological split, that she's more of a free trader, where Michael Gove has been more protectionist over the years. And she, you, I mean, during government, Liz Trust ended up on the wrong, she, on the losing side of that argument. Um, I, I remember one, um, I, I heard anyway, of one meeting in cabinet where she was basically saying, look, Boris, um, we're never going to get a deal with America if agriculture is not on the table. And Michael Gove was chief amongst his voices saying, we are not going to let our agricultural sector be, as he put it, put it on the altar of uh, a sacrificial gift to America. So fair enough, they, but, um, they disagree. But when this trust becomes prime minister, do you think we're going to get more of a free trading? Because she lost out to Gove in that trade argument. There's nobody to lose to, lose to her now. So do you think she's going to have a change of policy and be more free trading and actually put, for example, agriculture on the table in a free trade deal with America? So, so I think her government will be very pro-free trade and more so. I mean, you mentioned Michael Gove. I remember at the time of that dispute um, writing a column where uh, a trust supporter um, branded them the Waitrose protectionists, and this included uh, Michael Gove. I think George Eustace too. They they were regarded by uh, trust supporters as the axis of evil, axis of being evil. overly protectionist. <laughs> Um, so I think there is a question as to, of course, how far does her rhetoric go when she has to get MPs to support measures? Um, but I do think if you look at the people who will probably be in the prime positions, so Kwasi Kwarteng is likely to be the Chancellor, 
Um, you know, Liz Truss as Prime Minister is very pro-free market. Um, there will, I think, be a, a switch in the, in the balance of power and actually moving towards more ambitious deals. Because I think that uh, Liz Truss would probably like to go further, for example, in that Australia uh, free trade deal than she, than she was able to do, partly because of the what she was coming against in Whitehall and also from various forces within the Cabinet. Might she revisit the Australia trade deal then, Katie? Well, I think there's there's a chance to try and revisit some of these things. Of course, she's going to have a pretty full in-tray when, when she first gets in. So I think they'll want to be more ambitious with the free trade deals. And I think Australia is seen as a key ally. But of course, the government has now changed in Australia. And I think when she first comes in, of course, the, the biggest issue on her table will be cost of living. And I imagine that will occupy quite a lot of her time in, within the first few weeks. So free trade reforms, Isabel, perhaps more trade deals. What would List Trust do domestically? Well, in lots of ways, we haven't had a great deal of detail about what she plans to do domestically. Um, But I think there are some interesting hints. One of them is um, on the NHS, which is obviously going to be a huge issue electorally uh, over the next couple of years in the run up to the election. And we've seen increasingly distressing stories about people being uh, you know, stuck under makeshift shelters whilst waiting uh, for you know, 14 hours for an ambulance and, and so on. And we're, we're only going to hear more and more of these um, stories so that the pressure to do something on the NHS is going to grow. And the hint that Liz Truss has dropped there is um, slightly concerning for those of us who follow um, NHS reform, which is that she seems to want to do more of it, even though the current um, changes that have only just been enacted in the Health and Social Care Act 2022 to uh, are only just bedding in. Uh, she seems to want to uh, flatten the layers of management within the health service, which would require um, a huge amount of upheaval at a time that I'm not sure the health service has any elastic left, um, certainly not for the sort of things like moving managers around and and changing structures that take up a huge amount of time and don't necessarily impact on, you know, clinical outcomes, waiting times. And, and she's only and that got kind of something thing. like 18 months, realistically, before the next election. So if you're looking at an incredibly condensed period of time, NHS reform typically takes a year to think of the reform and four years to carry it out. So what, she might try to crunch something like this in a, because let, let, let's face it, the NHS is already looking like it's in crisis, let alone a winter crisis. We're looking at um, flu levels in Australia, which are quite high. We're also looking at the potential of pensioners dying of the cold. I mean, we all know, all know the link between house temperatures and the over 80s ending up in hospital. So NHS is looking for an incredibly difficult period of time. But you think Liz Truss would still do NHS reform in the middle of what is looking like an NHS crisis? Well, look, she said that repeatedly throughout this uh, leadership contest that she thinks that the NHS should have fewer middle managers, that there should be a collapse in the layers of management within the health service. I suspect that that may not end up being a a massive reform agenda once uh, she comes into office for all the reasons that you just listed. Um, I suspect there are two reasons for her saying it. One is probably that, you know, she is essentially a, she's a think tanker politician, isn't she? She's someone who likes coming up with ideas, likes challenging the consensus, finds the way in which uh, policies and structures operate interesting, but doesn't necessarily sit back and think, well, is is now the time to be doing this? Is this the right thing to do? Or even, um, I, I think some of her critics who I've been talking to over the past few days um, would say, thinking about what's happening at the moment. Um, The second thing is people just love bashing NHS management, um, which is kind of ironic because it was introduced by Margaret Thatcher. which who is, you know, obviously the person who we must all sort of say peace be upon her during this contest as much, as often as possible. Um, but uh, she was the one who who recognised that the health service was in complete chaos without any managers, with these sort of bizarre committees of doctors that were so, sort of run along post-war military lines. Um, so again, I think that's probably a sign that Truss hasn't looked into this too much. Then we've got, um, just moving on from, from the NHS, which I always find hard to do, um, we do have the, we've got the debate over handouts um, in in relation to the cost of living crisis, but what might she do about welfare? What might she do about um, economically inactive people? Um, the people who Rishi Sunak talks about quite a lot, who uh, are on unemployment benefit at a time of a, of a tight labour market. That's a five a very... million of them. Yeah, there's rather a lot. Yeah, uh, it's but a the thing is, Katie, if she's going to approach anything like this, she will need a crack team of commanders around her. Do we know anything about, for example, who her chief of staff is going to be, who she's going in for delivery? 
So there's been lots of rumours, and I think uh, Team Trust are very keen to not look too much as though they are planning for government, so as to look as, you know, uh, they've decided the, the, the result of the leadership contest is already a done deal. Um, but we know that Liz Truss is now spending about half her time planning for government. The polls put her very far ahead. And some of the rumours, for example, you've had people say, oh, David Frost, uh, the former uh, Brexit negotiator, he should be her chief of staff. And he has been backing Liz Truss. You also have people pointing to David Canzini, uh, who has been a number 10 under Boris Johnson, um, saying that actually David Canzini could have that type of role. I think one of the issues with David Canzini is actually some of the Boris Johnson loyalists, many of whom are backing this trust, are actually a bit sceptical about David Canzini when you break it down into the number 10 factions. And I think the name which I think... Uh, you haven't heard so much of, but I think is a, a probable pick is actually Ruth Porter. Um, now, Ruth Porter is a former advisor to Liz Truss. Liz Truss, I think, throughout her career has always uh, made sure to keep in close contact with those who have worked for her, who she has worked well with and trust, even if they are no longer on the payroll, so to speak. And uh, Ruth Porter has been playing a, a very key role in terms of the campaign. And I think the reason that it seems quite likely she'll get such a senior role is there a sense that A, I think Liz Truss wants to surround herself of people she trusts. We know it's going to be a very tough um, you know, first 100 days, but also people who understand her and have worked for her previously, I think, um, as opposed to perhaps, uh, you know, the bigger names amongst the MPs. Isabel and Katie, thanks very much indeed. Mm -hmm.